It's a pleasure to welcome uh, the governor to Marion County. Uh, we're pleased to have you here. Um, it's, uh, the, it's good to have you here for the FFA and for signing this bill. Uh, we have a very active FFA program here. They're a national three-star chapter, which puts them in the top 15 chapters in the state. So uh, very good, very good local chapter here under the leadership of uh, Mr. Daniel Mattingly. He's uh, the uh, ag teacher and FFA advisor. And our uh, principal, um, Mike Abel, I don't know where Mike went, over here. Um, we also have from the state a FFA office, Caitlin Con Conley. She's the Big Sandy Region Vice President. Uh, Joseph Peterson is our uh, Marion County Chapter President. Um, Brittany Jones is our Chapter Vice President. And then other folks we have here r relative is uh, David Sandusky, uh, right here, hard to miss. He's, uh, <laughs> this is a joke that goes back and forth, trust me. <laughs> he is uh, president of our FFA alumni. So uh, we have a good turnout here. Also uh, uh, from Farm Bureau, we have uh, uh, Joe Paul Mattingly. He's uh, a, a state board uh, director. Uh, Judge John Mattingly, pleased to have him here. Um, um, Gary Crenshaw, our mayor, Lebanon mayor, as well as uh, Marilyn Mullins, the mayor of Raywick, back here. Um, and of course, uh, sit next to you, Terry Mills. We're glad to have Terry here as well and the support that he has given to agriculture and to the FFA. So um, I, I got to tell a little story. Uh, I don't know how many, of, if any of you all were at the state, um, uh, the country ham breakfast this year, but the governor had one of the best lines ever. Um, Mr. Haney introduced practically everybody there. And so when the governor got up, he said, would the three people that Mr. Haney didn't introduce please stand up, we'll recognize <laughs> you too. <laughs> so <laughs> not quite that many here, but uh, um, anyway, governor, we're glad to have you here and, and thank you for coming. Thank you all. Dave, thank you. And it's, it's always great to be here in Marion County, be here in Lebanon uh, to visit with you. This is obviously one of my favorite places. I've been here a lot during the last seven years. We have been very successful in locating a lot of industry here over the seven years I've been governor. Uh, it is because not just the hard work that we put in, it's because of this community. It's because of this county. It's because of everybody here making this a place that people want to be and they want to live because it's a great quality of life. So you've got a lot to be proud of. We're here today to ceremonially sign a bill having to do uh, generally with sales tax exemption, but specifically it has to do with the FFA National Convention. You know, the FFA and the 4-H particularly are two organizations that, to me, uh, provide the backbone for the future of our ag community all across the state. Uh, these are our future leaders. These are the people who we hope will take the reins of our agricultural economy and build that economy even more. You know, agriculture has been a cornerstone of Kentucky's economy, starting back even before Kentucky became a state. And it's still that way. It will be that way for generations to come. Kentucky helps feed this nation and feed this world. Uh, that's how important this part of the economy is to us. And you folks are the future leaders uh, of that economy. I had mentioned to several of you one of the steps that we took recently to recognize just that with the FFA and the 4-H. All of us know about the State Fair every year. That's a big showcase for Kentucky agriculture and it gives us all a chance to come together as an ag community and celebrate uh, what we do and how we do it and the future of, of our state and the future of agriculture. 
Well, there's a board that the governor appoints that runs that whole facility in Louisville, and in addition, the International Convention Center, which is downtown in Louisville, and oversees that. Uh, the governor appoints those folks, and, uh, and it helps to plan the state fair. Well, recently, um, I signed an executive order to change the membership of that board. And as part of that change, I designated the president, the, the state president of the FFA and the state president of the 4-H to be two advisory members on that state fair board. Because uh, not only can, can uh, they be helpful in terms of leadership on that board, but it's going to bring a fresh perspective, a different perspective, a young perspective to how we should be, what should we be doing at the state fair? How should it be different? How can we make it even better? And who better to ask than the folks that are there every year and working hard and, and participating in all the different events. So I'm excited about that. I, I think that is a good investment for all of us to make uh, in the future of Kentucky by bringing these young folks in and making them a part of the decision making process. You know, every year now for the last, I think, two years uh, and for several years before, next week, an army of about 60,000 mostly young and very committed adults will descend on Louisville. They're going to be wearing their blue jackets with their gold lettering and they'll be talking about things like leadership, technology, science, and agriculture. The occasion is the 87th, I believe it is, 87th National FFA Convention and Expo. And that obviously speaks to our heritage and to our ag economy. You know, they held a recent news conference uh, in Louisville at that International Convention Center. And the organizers of the FFA National Convention said that meeting in Louisville next week will have about a $40 million economic impact on our state. Just that one convention in that period of time. Now next year, we have it again. And as I recall, it's for the third year in a row. But then the convention leaves and goes to Indianapolis for three years. And we've been in this swapping back and forth for some time now. and. Uh, I'm hoping to break that string uh, down the road here a little bit uh, because we've been competing with Indianapolis, great place, uh, for several years for this. And we want to at least make sure that it returns to Kentucky for another three years, if not maybe being a little more permanent than what it's been in the past. And we needed some tools to help us in this competition. And your state representative, Terry Mills, stepped up and provided us with one very important tool that's going to help us to reattract that national convention back to Louisville. And he sponsored a bill in this last session of the General Assembly. It's House Bill 488. It was passed through both the House and Senate, and I signed it into law, and we're going to sign it again ceremonially here today to draw attention to it because it's important. And what this bill does is provide a tax exemption on the sales tax for sales made by groups such as the FFA during their annual national conventions if those conventions are held in Kentucky. For example, next week when they're there, FFA souvenirs, teaching tools, club supplies, gifts purchased at the convention, they'll all be exempt from the state sales tax. And this exemption has been put in place from October 1 of this year until December 31 of, of 2021. Now, what does that mean? What it means is, is that instead of that 6% coming to the state, that 6% is going to be able to go into the FFA's pocket, the folks that are selling all of these different goods there and souvenirs and all of the things that you buy and sell at these at these national FFA conventions. That means more money to support this organization. But what it also means is it gives us a tool to go out and attract 
not only the FFA convention back, but a lot of other conventions to town, into Kentucky, because I don't know of any other state that has that kind of enticement uh, to bring conventions in like an exemption to the sales tax. As I mentioned, you know, we help feed the nation here in Kentucky with our, with our farm community, and we're very proud of our agricultural heritage. And this is another way that we can show our support for that culture and show our support for the future of these young folks that are here with us today. I want to thank personally Representative Mills for the leadership he showed in coming up with this and shepherding it through the House and Senate. And I'd like to ask him to come up and say a few words, Terry. Well, let's see, a couple people first. Uh, you know, are, are, it, let me have a show of hands. Anybody here from LaRue or Green County? Okay, good. <laughs> Marion County cattlemen have the best ribeye sandwiches of anywhere in the state I've been, and I'm sure of that. And Mr. Gene Lanham is president of the local cattlemen, and Frank Bland is always there cooking. I know that. So thank you all for that. I've been trying to figure out a way, Governor, to get them to come to Frankfurt on the lawn and set up shop, and, but I, I don't know. Uh, well, I don't know much about money, so I don't know how we would handle that. I wouldn't want them to go broke doing it, but I'd love to have them do that. The other comment and thought I have is, uh, isn't it wonderful to see a majority female member of the FFA chapter at Marion County High? I'm so proud, proud of that. You know, the governor talked about uh, running the bill through the House and the Senate and his signature, but uh, I also want you to know that Daniel Mattingly brought a, brought a contingent of FFA representatives up, and maybe without them there, it wouldn't have been so smooth. But when they sat down in the room and people got to see them, it, it was a no-brainer. I don't think there were any no votes in the House, Senate, uh, or in the House or the Senate. So thank you all for that. Um, as the governor said, this will give us a much better shot, I think, at getting the FFA convention, which has, a, has that $40 million economic impact that is so valuable to us in the years uh, to 18, 19, and 21. Wait a minute. 19, 20, and 21, I believe, yeah, because it's done on three-year contracts. We have it 13, 14, 15. Indianapolis has it 16, 17, 18, and this will give us uh, a good shot at doing that. You know, it shouldn't be in Indiana. People say, I hear that all the time in the legislature. Indiana does this and Tennessee does that. I really don't like that. We need, to, we need Kentucky does it better than all, all of them, and so we need to keep things like the FFA convention here. It's also effective this year, so when you go down to the convention, and I don't know you all are looking forward to it, uh, that sales tax exemption will apply then. So in summary, it's, it's, I appreciate the governor. Thank you for coming out and supporting agriculture and our economy in so many ways here in Marion County. Thank you to agriculture. Uh, we are involved in agriculture. We have the state cattleman president in uh, Marion County. He couldn't be here today. But uh, Mr. Downs couldn't be here, but I know Gene represents them. We have Farm Bureau leadership representatives here and an active Farm Bureau organization here. And so we are very lucky in Marion County to have such an agricultural presence. And I want you to know that I know in my district agriculture is important, and I'll keep doing everything I can to make it strong. So thanks again, Governor. Thank you all for coming, especially you FFA folks and, and Daniel. And uh, it's been a pleasure to uh, – I haven't got a lot of bills passed since I've been up there, but this one was an absolute joy and, and partly because of the local support I had from the FFA. Thank you very much.